Well, hello again all. Here we are again in our little shop. Today we get to work on something pretty cool. We have a late 50s ES-175 that come in. And like anything of that vintage, it's starting to show a few age factors. So let's take a look here. Got some pretty cool PAFs. This guitar is all original. All the original knobs, everything. Uh, our pick guard's curled a little bit. Uh, that's going to have to be left alone. We have to tighten up the toggle switch. That's no big deal. Kind of cool to come in with acoustic strings on it. <laughs> Apparently this guitar has been in the family since it was purchased originally. We've got some fret problems. Uh, it was actually brought in to have about five frets replaced instead of tuners replaced. Which seems like an easy thing to do. Let's get a good look at these tuners. Um, this is something that happens a lot with the 50s guitars. <coughs> we see this a lot. Uh, we have what is referred to as plastic rot. Uh, two tuners have been replaced. So you see what the originals end up doing. So we're going to replace those. Of course we'll be keeping the originals for the owner so you can keep all that stuff with it. We're going to be changing as little as possible. What you would think would be an easy job on this guitar is going to turn out to have a few difficulties, a couple challenges involved. Uh, the first thing right off the bat I ran into was I cannot source the original size fret wire. This fret wire is 72 thousandths wide and 35 thousandths tall. That is not available anymore. So I have a plan for that. We'll see how that works out. If we were going to do an entire refret, it wouldn't be a problem. We could use something very close and no one would notice, but we can't stick five eighty thousands wide frets in this guitar. So, yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. Also I have a plan for the tuners. <clears throat> also on this guitar we're not going to be doing a huge cleanup job. We're going to clean it up a little bit, but uh, like the vintage guys all say we don't want the vintage police coming after us, so we're going to try to keep this one under wraps and try not to get too carried away. Uh, the vintage guys say patina, patina, patina. So we're going to leave the patina. <laughs> and as far as doing the fret work, we're going to be doing as little sanding up here as possible just to clean the slots up. This is going to be fun. We've got very thin, fragile binding that we have to fit the frets between because on these guitars, like a lot of the way Gibson does the fret work, the frets were put in the fingerboard before the bindings glued on, so they're trimmed flush with the edge. With these, we don't have the little nibs, but the fret end is right up at the binding. Something I've dealt with before, it shouldn't be too big a deal. So, we're going to carry on, get the frets out of this, get started on it, and we will continue later. At this point, we have our frets in. You see they line up at the end of the binding. Got to take a little bit of care there. We still have to bevel the ends. There's a little bit of very minor leveling that has to be done. But all that worked out rather well. Our solution for the situation with the fret size was I took a piece of 80 thousandths wide fret wire and milled it down to 70 thousandths. So if we check an original one here, see we have 70. Check one of mine. We have 
So I'm off a thousandths and a half on that one. Let's double check down here. Well, let's see. Here's one of the original ones that's 69 and a half. There's one mine that's 68 and a half. 69. Okay. Close enough. So, let's get on with it. We have our 1959 ES 175 finished. We had to clean some pots and tighten up the nuts on those, clean the output jack, adjust the pickups, set the bridge, and recut the notches for the bridge saddles, slots here where they should be. They were actually worn over to where the strings buzzed in the saddle lines a little bit. Tighten up the nut on the switch. We have our frets. No one will know. We have all these old tuners here ready to bag up and old frets to put back in it so we can have his original stuff. Speaking of tuners, we had to replace the tuners of course. So here we are. I found, of course, a replacement set of direct glue on single ring tuners. And if you look, let's see if we can get the light on this a little bit. There we go. Well, look a little bit, they are slightly aged. I wanted to take the shine off of them just a little bit so I lightly aged them. Uh, actually, colored the knobs a little bit too. I didn't want to scream brand new tuners on a 59 model guitar. I wanted to look like it kind of belonged there. This way uh, we've got a head start into making them look like they belong on a 60 year old guitar. This guitar is in really good shape. Like I say, everything now on this guitar is dead original except for the strings, six frets, and the tuners. And speaking of such things, I know people would kill for that knob <laughs> and those PAFs and those knobs. <laughs> Are you Les Paul guys drooling yet? A lot of these 175s get uh, cut up and it's very odd to see, very rare, let's say, to see one with the original PAFs in it. Uh, these guitars with the value not being as high as some of the other stuff are one of the first ones to have the PAFs disappear to go into somebody's Les Pauls. I say these uh, are worth a good bit of money right on their own. Speaking of the PAFs, I know you guys are sitting there, you know, the Les Paul guys are sitting there drooling going, oh man, look at those PAFs. Well, yeah, there they are. So, I know you're thinking, what do they measure? Well, the bridge one measures 9.86k. The neck one reads 8.96k. The rear one is very bright and has a very sync coil type tone to it. Cool guitar. Just one of those things that I really got to enjoy working on. It's kind of nice to work on something like this and I don't mind going through the extra trouble of making special frets and aging tuners. Something like this is certainly worth it. So, till next time, play nice. I'll see you later.